we're gonna build a very simple DIY 12 volt solar power system. I'm just gonna break this down so it's super easy for you to understand and it's a great place for you to start practicing and learning how to build these systems so that uh, you can expand it and grow it to fit your needs. Links for all the components that I'm gonna use are down in the description below. So to start, the heart of every system is the battery. This is just a very common 12 volt, uh, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate is hands down the way to go these days. They generally cost less than a less lead acid battery and you get so much more runtime and functionality. So just go straight and buy a 12 volt lithium iron phosphate battery. Next, we need some kind of solar. Uh, this is just a flexible uh, solar panel. Uh, I would personally recommend uh, getting some rigid solar panels. Uh, they last a lot longer and seem to work a lot better. Next, we have a solar charge controller right here. This is the interface between your solar panels and the battery. So the charge controller's job is to take whatever voltage the solar panel is giving it and changing it so that it works with the battery. And then it also can shut charging off and on depending on the state of charge of the battery. I'm going to leave a link to this specific charge controller. It's not branded this brand anymore, but it is made by the same company. I highly recommend this charge controller because it's very good. It's got Bluetooth app connectivity and it's small, which is really nice. But uh, the best thing about it is it works for 12, 24, 36, and 48 volt batteries. So you can buy this, start out with a 12 volt system like I did, but then if you decide, like I did, to expand and uh, get something larger and uh, maybe go to a 48 volt system, that charge controller will still work and you're not out any money at all. I also want to emphasize that starting out to 12 volt and then changing to different voltages, whether it's going to 24, 36, or all the way up to 48, you can still utilize your 12 volt batteries. You'll have to get at least four of them so that you can hook them up in series, but they, your money is not wasted on those either. Like I said, I started out with a 12 volt system and it grew and became huge. In fact, you should check it out because I had pretty much all of these 12 volt batteries hooked in parallel in that system. I'll leave a link to that uh, video down in the description below. But then uh, my needs changed and uh, adjusted and I decided I wanted a 48 volt system. And so again, none of my effort or parts were lost. I just repurposed them into a 48 volt system. I'm going to make a whole video about how to convert a 12 volt system or 24 volt system or whatever up to a 48 volt system. So be sure and subscribe so you don't miss that. This will be the only piece that probably will not be able to be reused going from a 12 volt system to a different voltage. I highly recommend you guys check out this brand, Joompa. I'll leave a link uh, to their stuff in the description. They make really high quality, high frequency inverter for a really good price. So let me show you how easy it is to build your system. Now 12 volts is very safe to work with. However, batteries, especially lithium iron phosphate batteries, have very low internal resistance and they can still discharge a huge amount of current even at just 12 volts. If you have a short circuit, that current can even melt wires, even large wires like this, or even huge wires like this. Most of these batteries have a built-in unit called a BMS. That stands for battery management system. And it's supposed to help protect the battery itself as well as you and your components. And it's supposed to kick off whenever it detects a high current event. But I always recommend just play it safe, get a fuse. They're not that expensive, especially an inline fuse like this. I'll leave a link for this. Now note that fuses have voltage ratings to them. Them, okay, this one works for 12 and 24 volt systems. You need a different one for 36 and 48 volt units, okay? So I'm going to take the fuse here. We always fuse on the positive side, okay? So I'm going to take the positive cable from the inverter and uh, put it first because it's going to be the heaviest draw. So we want it closest to the power source. In other words, the battery. And then the other thing I'm going to hook up is the solar charge controller. Be sure that you get the correct wires. I don't have a red wire for my charge controller. I know that the white is positive and black is negative, but make sure you get your polarity straight and take time. No need to be in a rush. That's where most people mess up is they get in a rush and then they put something wrong and that's where you get into trouble. And we'll go ahead and tighten it down. You need to make sure that all your connections are tight. Okay, that connection is sound now. Negative does not need a fuse at all. So go ahead and unscrew 
the terminal bolt. We're gonna go ahead and put the negative of the inverter on as well as the charge controller. And once again, we're gonna put the heaviest load, which would be the inverter on the bottom. So it's closest to the battery. All right, next, before I just touch this and uh, connect the positive up, if I were to do that right now, you'd see a giant spark of electricity there. That's because both of these units right here have capacitors in them on the DC side, and they're just sitting there waiting for electricity to come into them, and they will absorb a huge amount of current really fast. Doesn't take very long, but they will, and that will give you a huge spark. That can be startling. It also damages your metal that gives you a burn spot wherever the spark happens, and potentially even blow the fuse. Generally, it's not a long enough duration to blow the fuse, but uh, it can happen. So I'm gonna leave a link for just these cheap resistors right here. All you gotta do is touch one end of the resistor to the battery and the other end to your cable. What that will do is it lets the current flow into those capacitors very gently. It doesn't take long, but it makes a huge difference in the longevity of your connections, as well as I think uh, your things where you're not just punching them in the gut, so to speak, with electricity. So we're just gonna uh, open this up. I'm gonna stick the one end of the resistor down in there and put the other end over here. No sparks or anything weird like that. We're just gonna count to five or six or 10 or whatever, not very long. And then shortly after doing that, we can go ahead and touch that and uh, connect it. All right, and we're all connected up, super easy. If you take a look here at the charge controller, you'll see that the green light by battery is lit up. And then two, if we come over here to the inverter and flip its switch on, you'll hear it beep, and we've got the inverter turned on and ready to go. Now, today is a lousy solar day, very overcast, as you can see. So we're not gonna get uh, much solar power in, but uh, let me show you how to connect this up. There's a negative wire coming from the solar panel and a positive wire coming from the solar panel. These connectors on the ends of the solar panel only plug in to one way. So even if I try to plug these two in together, they will not go together. They're only going to plug in one way. Negative goes to the negative wire and positive goes to the positive wire, just like that. And if you look and see, the solar charge controller now is recognizing that there's PV power and battery power. But now we can simply take a load, plug it into the inverter, and look at that we've got power. Guys, let me give you a pro tip. Get yourself one of these tools. I'll leave a link for it down in the description. It is your best friend when it comes to disconnecting your solar. See how that has those little pointies? You simply slide them over the MC4 connectors and pull it apart. It disconnects super, super easily. However, word to the wise, solar is usually the most dangerous thing in any power system, especially when you're only working with 12 volts. Yes, the inverter can generate 120 volts, but uh, you're pretty familiar with using that around your house because that's what comes out of your standard outlets. If you put a bunch of solar together to really give you some good juice, because uh, the charge controller can actually accept quite a bit, uh, be careful because it can generate fairly high voltage DC, especially when you hook uh, a bunch of panels in series. This charge controller can accept up to 150 volts of DC power. So if you get a big solar array and you hook them all into series to uh, get some high voltage, which is a good thing, I would highly recommend a solar disconnect switch. I'll put a picture of one uh, right here because I don't have uh, a loose one uh, readily available. But that would be a wise thing to have so that uh, you can kill the solar power safely before you start disconnecting stuff or just uh, do your solar connections and disconnections during the night when the energy isn't coming from the solar panels. Now, some of you may be asking, well, what if I want to charge my battery up? Not with solar. Easy. Just to simply get a battery charger rated for lithium iron phosphate batteries like this. Plug it into any 120 volt power source and then simply plug it in and you've got it charging. Now people always ask, well, can I charge with this at the same time I'm discharging from the battery? Yes, you can actually. You could even uh, charge the battery with this at the same time that you are putting some solar in. You just wanna make sure that you don't over amp the battery's rated charge capacity. You can find that in the documentation for the battery that you buy. I can almost guarantee that you're going to want more power once you get started. So go ahead and get the charge controller that 
is going to be compatible with all your different voltages. The one I've got linked is identical to this one, but mine is a 20 amp unit. The new one is actually twice that, 40 amps, which is awesome. You're almost always going to want more inverter power. So I would say go ahead and get a larger size one to begin with, because if you get a small one, I can almost guarantee you that you're gonna wish you had more power. And then get to a few odds and ends that will help you. The uh, pre-charge resistor right there and a little disconnect tool and like I said uh, few proper fuses for your batteries and then I can almost guarantee that you guys will want to know in your setup how much power is left in the battery how much power you've used how much power you've charged all of this stuff that's where the shunt comes in you can get smart batteries that have shunt somewhat uh, built into them and if you start adding a large quantity of them, it's nice to get a big picture of overall how much power has been consumed, how much power has been put in. So give some serious consideration to getting a smart shunt as well. 100%, you know, non-sponsored or anything. It's just my thoughts on how to make your system better and what I think you guys are going to want as soon as you start dipping your toes into this. But that's 100% optional. You don't need a shunt. You don't need a pre-charge resistor, but I think that's very good. You don't need a giant inverter. You can get a thousand watt inverter if you want. You don't necessarily need the disconnect tool to disconnect your MC4 cables, but uh, all of these things make it substantially easier and nicer. The fuse I think is non-negotiable even if a BMS works and protects what it's supposed to. Have you ever heard the saying, one is none and two is one? I would much rather have a protection that I know is going to work regardless of what the BMS is going to do. Okay guys, leave me your comments on what you think of this. How did I do teaching this concept of building a simple 12 volt system. I want to help provide a little more education and help to you guys because uh, more and more we need to learn how to DIY stuff. Energy costs are going through the roof. Power outages, natural disasters are happening more and more frequently. We really need to know this stuff uh, to be able to not only just survive but to hopefully even thrive uh, during those bumps in the road. Plus, this has the potential of saving you a ton of money in energy costs if you used setups like this to offset power consuming devices in your home. Let me know what you'd like to see next, what questions you have. Questions can always lead to more content. If free educational content like this is helpful to you, please give me a like, a subscribe, a comment, and a share. Those are four 100% free things for you to do that really benefit the channel and help provide compensation and encouragement to me to continue to bring you more free content like this. I want to tell those of you who have watched the whole video up until this point a huge thank you. Very few people watch till the end of the video, but because you're one of those people that did, it's your lucky day. Junpa wants to help support my audience to get going on their power adventures. And they have kindly agreed to provide three of my viewers with a free inverter. So we're actually gonna give away three of these Joompa inverters. So if you're watching this, what I need you to do is comment down below with a comment that includes the words, watched until the end. All of the comments with that phrase in it, watched until the end, I will enter into the giveaway for this inverter. Also be subscribed so that uh, you know when the official giveaway is happening. Everyone stay safe and we'll catch y'all next time.